I'm Stacey Marie Ishmel, Managing Editor of Crypto for Bloomberg News. And this is Bloomberg Crypto, a daily Bloomberg iHeart podcast. It's Wednesday, March 8th. Voyager, Genesis, Celsius, and of course, FTX. All major crypto companies that have filed for bankruptcy. All companies that we've talked about a lot on this podcast. But even if you've heard of these platforms, did you know that there's a tax season quirk facing any U.S. investors who had digital tokens tied up in these accounts? That's right. These investors who lost money because these platforms went bust or filed for bankruptcy may in some cases have to pay taxes on those assets that they no longer even have access to. Here to walk us through why some crypto investors are really dreading this U.S. tax season are Bloomberg reporter Claire Ballantyne and Bloomberg tax reporter Lauren Vella. We'll also be joined by Celsius investor Roman Smolkin, who lost money in Celsius and is now facing a tax bill. It is March in the United States. And what that means for a lot of people is they are trying to figure out how long they can possibly avoid thinking about doing their taxes. But there is a group of investors who don't have any choice. They've been thinking about this for a long time. And it's not looking like it's going to be a super fun tax season for them. Claire, tell us more about your reporting on this. So I worked on the story about people who have crypto holdings that are locked up on these bankrupt platforms. That was the huge story last year was that a lot of places where people were keeping their crypto holdings online either went bankrupt or had to freeze withdrawals because the companies were having difficulties so they could no longer access their crypto holdings. That was bad enough. People had thousands, in some case millions of dollars Mm -hmm. worth of their money they could no longer access and don't know when or if they'll be able to. What's now happening is that in some cases, people are getting taxed on it. And it's a very specific part that they're getting taxed on. Mm -hmm. And so that's if they have crypto that are on exchanges that has earned interest. Mm -hmm. So a lot of the crypto platforms before they went bankrupt were offering yield products. Essentially, kind of like a traditional bank, you would put your crypto into accounts, then the platforms would loan it out Mm -hmm. and you earned interest on that. Interest in general in the U.S. is subject to income taxes, and that includes interest earned on crypto products. So for those investors who had money in crypto lending products and earned interest, they're now being taxed on it. Despite not being able to actually access those holdings. So if I'm hearing you correctly, these are folks who, say, put money in Celsius or in very, you know, pick a bankrupt crypto lender who had offered these products because there have been several. And they thought, wow, OK, that went poorly for me. And now they're like, wow, this is going even worse than I thought because I have to pay taxes on something that I don't even have access to. Lauren, how is this possible? Well, I think, first of all, the whole situation is so convoluted and ultimately very specific to where your assets are tied up. For each specific bankruptcy, there are very specific set of rules in terms of, you know, Celsius. I think there is an issue there where, you know, we've got a recent ruling where the judge has said, you know, the coins um, placed in these earn accounts or these interest earning accounts, they belong to to the cryptocurrency lender. They do not belong mm-hmm. to the lendee. How is this possible? Well, right now, the IRS has made it very clear, at least for now, that there's not a lot of leeway for claiming losses if your assets are tied up in these bankruptcy proceedings. Mm -hmm. Um, What they have also said is that basically just because your cryptocurrency has plummeted in value and you've still held on to it does not mean that you get to claim a Section 165 deduction. So let me let me make sure I'm understanding this correctly. Even if at the time that I made the deposit, 
my crypto was worth ten thousand dollars and now it's worth like five dollars with no zeros yes <laughs> i have i can't claim any kind of loss on this i still have to pay tax on the ten thousand dollars well well you're not you're just not being able to claim a loss basically Got right it. now so the irs actually put out guidance in january stating that even if you see this really major shift in value say you had 10 you had a ten thousand dollar value and it's now to five thousand or it's now to one thousand that is not a worthlessness deduction you have held it mm -hmm. you have not sold it it still has worth even if it went from a dollar to a cent it still has worth and you are not allowed to mm -hmm. claim that kind of deduction Claire is absolutely right that if you are generating income from an asset, you are going to be taxed on it. That is just what the IRS has said and and done. Um, that is a that is a regular uh, occurrence. But for now, I think in terms of what I have heard from tax professionals about people who have money or assets on these defunct exchanges. It's mm -hmm. kind of a limbo. It's a wait and see approach right now. Well, it's wait and see, except for the having to pay taxes. Yes, part. yes. That, in that very <laughs> specific, in that very specific instance, if you have, let's say, if you're accruing interest. Now we're joined by someone today who is one of those folks in that wait and see and pay taxes situation. And you know, Roman, you described yourself as a former crypto enthusiast who has been personally affected by Celsius, you know, halting withdrawals and then filing for bankruptcy. Can you share a little bit about what that's been like? Yeah, so I purchased my first Bitcoin almost 10 years ago, or early, early on, uh, back when they were in the hundreds and not uh, tens of thousands of a price. And uh, I deposited most of my crypto holdings with Celsius a couple of years ago because they were paying very significant interest rates on just holding the money there. So it seemed like a win-win. I was just holding on to my crypto and uh, I, I was looking forward to getting the interest from them. Now, majority of my personal crypto was actually not in things like Bitcoin or Ethereum. It was actually stable coins. So mm -hmm. I saw those as completely risk free and they were offering somewhere between nine and like 12 percent interest on stable coins. Celsius was. Yeah, Celsius offering was. That and similar platforms. It wasn't just the Celsius, it was Celsius, Nexo, and several other platforms were doing the same thing. Um, mm -hmm. So Celsius seemed to be the biggest, so I chose them to put the majority of my funds into. It was literally my emergency fund. Basically, all the cash I had on hand, I put with them because of how well, how much interest they were offering. So when Lauren mentioned, you know, the value dropping, I'm like, well, in my case, the value really didn't drop because the, the biggest percentage was stable coins, and they mm -hmm. held their value, except the judge ruled that now those stable coins belong to Celsius and not me. And not yet, I am still having to pay the taxes on the interest that they theoretically earned in the last couple of years, which I already paid the year before as well. Um, except now I don't have access not only to the interest, but also not to the funds themselves. And it's becoming more and more clear that come uh, approximately, they're estimating in July of this year, we're going to have some clarity and the percentages of the people are going to get back. Now, some people who had very small amounts invested, and that being $5,000 and below, are supposed to get 70% uh, of their investment back. Uh, so they're going to lose 30%. And I'm, I'm, I'm pretty sure that once they lose that 30, they should be able to claim it the following year on their taxes as a loss. I'm hoping. For the rest of us who had more than $5,000 invested, uh, it's unclear how much we're going to get back, but the rumors are somewhere between like 18 and 30%. In other words, mm -hmm. losing... 70 the plus majority, percent of the majority, yeah. the vast majority. Absolutely. And there's also very unclear of how it's actually going to happen because I don't think they're going to give us actual coins back. It sounds like they're going to give us equity in this new company that's being formed, called literally called New Co, uh, as if they couldn't come up with a better name. I'm like, okay, I didn't put my stable coins and my emergency funds into Celsius to at the end end up as a stockholder in some new company who will probably go down to zero. It, for all we know, it could also be the most successful tech startup in the, you know, <laughs> the next 10 years. It could happen. But the real, I think the reality is uh, that they were going to lose a lot of money and those uh, stocks are going to go down to zero. So essentially, I'm going to lose all of the funds that I had invested in Celsius. And still, I'm having to come up with money out of pocket to pay taxes this year and very unclear of what's going to happen next year. Hopefully, at least it won't be taxed anymore. 
it's a very complicated set of realities. And I think one of the things, to your point, Roman, is it's unclear what the outcomes are and what the timelines are, right? So at the moment, you're confronted with a situation in which you have an imminent thing that you have to pay. And even if the you know various folks involved in this and there are ways out, that's all going to come after the end of tax season when you've, you're all, you have already paid this amount. Up next, you'll hear more from my colleagues Claire Ballantyne and Lauren Vella, as well as from Celsius investor Roman Smolkin on what crypto holders in the U.S. are facing this tax season. Lauren, one, you know, possible quirk here is the idea that these might be branded as, you know, like fraudulent, right? And like, what is the carve out for if a court were to decide, for example, that actually, no, these folks don't have a liability? What would have to happen for that to be true? So I think this is very specific in the case of FTX, where there are criminal implications. There's a criminal case against um, Sam Bankman-Fried, SBF colloquially. Mm -hmm. There is a possibility that, you know, I've heard from people in the tax world, specifically in the crypto tax world, where they're saying the Bernie Madoff scandal and the guidance that was issued by the IRS following the scandal could be used as a roadmap or a precedent to figure out how if Sam Bankman-Fried is convicted, which that has not happened yet. Right. And he has said that he is not guilty of all charges against yes, him. Yes. That could potentially be a roadmap to claim a loss based on theft. So unfortunately, for this particular case, for FDX investors, I really, it seems like it could be months, it could be years to see how they could potentially claim these losses. What some crypto tax professionals, digital asset professionals are saying, though, is to make sure that you are keeping very thorough records to figure out what basis is, what you paid for the coin and all of your transactions so that when the time comes, you have that information to provide to the federal government. I also think that there's an element of frustration in the timeline of these proceedings. It's it's one thing to not know what's going to happen with your holdings that are locked up on these platforms. It's another to be told, oh, you still have to pay interest mm-hmm. on it. Not not even you have you might have to pay interest if you one day get the holdings back. The one thing that isn't slow in this process is the IRS <laughs> and they're coming for <laughs> the interest income on this. So I, I think it's just it's another blow to people who already are not doing well to begin with with having their, their money locked up. And I think, you know, in terms of of the tax landscape this year, there are some other frustrating things happening. Mutual funds that have lost value are still distributing capital gains. Tax season in general isn't fun for people. This is an extra weird one. And Mm -hmm. this is a case where people are having to pay money sort of needlessly. As we also know, the IRS isn't the most nimble agency. Although here they're moving, as you say, pretty fast. Yeah, well, they're moving moving fast in one regard. They're moving fast to collect the money. Mm -hmm. Um, In terms of, you know, taking this into consideration, Mm -hmm. they have not as much. I don't think they quite have a plan for what to do with this. So in in the meantime, you know, the advice that I heard at least was that you should pay this. I mean, you don't want to be faced with a tax audit. Roman, do you want to be faced with a tax audit? (laughs) Yeah, so that's the advice I've heard. And uh, um, as much as I would hate to pay for it, I'm going to have to pay for it and then figure it out next year. For the last few years, uh, I'm sorry, Lauren, but I've done TurboTax. Uh, but I have a feeling <laughs> next year and probably the next few years, I'm going to have to go with the tax expert and, and literally have them dig in once there's clarity on uh, how those losses will affect uh, the future filings. And I'm really hoping, I- I've heard there's a concept of amending prior returns. I'm really hoping once all of that is figured out, I can go back to the last two years when I actually had significant taxes that I paid on that interest that then Mm -hmm. in my mind was stolen from me along with the funds, then then claim all of it as a loss and recoup some of those, uh, not just the the funds, probably not, but at least the taxes. So I'm hoping the government will be fair enough to say, listen, if it really does look like those funds were stolen from you, then they, I shouldn't have been taxing them to begin with. Roman, just as a kind of a closing question for you, 
hindsight is twenty twenty. but is there anything you wish you had done differently? Whether it's crypto or all the things that happened before crypto, when you see those kinds of offerings, just be very careful on investing or placing your funds with those kinds of platforms because those returns truly are unrealistic, uh, especially on a consistent basis. So yeah, I, I certainly learned my lesson. Um, I, there's more lessons I have learned as far as, you know, don't put all your eggs in one basket, never put your emergency fund in any investment platform because its purpose is to be an emergency fund that can be easily ac- accessed. So mm-hmm. I took a gamble. I was hoping to make good interest on it and I would have been happy to pay taxes on the interest if I actually kept my money. But as it worked out, I lost the money, I lost the interest, <laughs> and I lost my emergency fund and then some. You lost all that, but you gained a tax lawyer. So hopefully, (laughs) you know, hopefully next year will work out better for you. Well, Roman, thank you so much for sharing your story and good luck with the IRS. And Claire, Lauren, always a pleasure. Thanks for having us. Thank you. Thank you so much. You heard from Bloomberg reporter Claire Ballantyne and Bloomberg tax reporter Lauren Vella. You can find more of their reporting on the Bloomberg Terminal and on Bloomberg.com. For even more, check out our twice weekly newsletter, Bloomberg Crypto. This is Bloomberg Crypto, a daily podcast from Bloomberg and iHeartRadio. For more shows from iHeartRadio, visit the iHeartRadio app, Apple Podcasts, or wherever you get your podcasts. Send us your comments, questions, or suggestions for the show to crypto at Bloomberg.net. The supervising producer of Bloomberg Crypto is Vicky Vergolina. Our senior producer is Janet Babin. Our producers are Mohamed Farouk and Sharon Bariro. Our associate producers are Ty Butler and Moses Undam. Desta Wonderad is our engineer. Original music by Leo Sidron. I'm Stacey Marie Ishmael. We'll be back tomorrow. <laughs>